Photoshop 2025 is here with incredible new features. Everything from updates to generative AI to the ability to once again work with 3D objects. Let me show you everything you need to know about Photoshop 2025. The Remove tool in Photoshop 2025 has two incredible new options in the Find Distractions dropdown. You can choose wires and cables to automatically remove power lines with just one click. And the results are great in most cases. Also from this new dropdown, you can choose people to automatically select people who are distracting in your photo. Photoshop is smart enough to disregard the main subject, but it selects the guy on the left and the group of people in the back. Now just press the enter key to remove them from your photo. The second new dropdown in the remove tool is the mode, which allows you to choose whether or not to use generative AI in the removal process. Auto is the default setting where Photoshop decides which mode to use. But why would you want to disable generative AI? Two reasons. First, there is no need to waste your generative credits on smaller tasks, such as removing this orange cone. Second, removing objects without generative AI is almost instantaneous. You don't have to upload your image to the cloud and wait for the results to process. Look at how fast Photoshop removed the wrinkles from her skirt. Let's now take a look at the Generate Similar feature. Start by enabling the Selection Brush tool. Make a selection around the side of your image. When you return to where you started and release the mouse button, Photoshop will automatically fill in the area in the center. Now click the Generator Fill button and type a prompt like Camping Tent and hit the Enter key to generate. Photoshop will then give us three convincing tents. They all look good but are not quite what I'm looking for. I like the orange scent the best because it balances well with the green in the image, but I don't like this angle. So I can now go into the three dot icon and choose this new feature, Generate Similar. And Photoshop will generate three new variations similar to the one I chose. Now let's look at the Generate Background feature in Photoshop 2025. But do me a favor, if you're enjoying this video, hit that like button now and subscribe. To start, I'm going to click on the Remove Background button from the taskbar. This will remove the background for the image. The mask is not perfect as you can see, but that's okay. I'm not going to edit it now, even though I could by using these buttons. What I want to show you is the generate background function, which is right here. When you click on this, Photoshop will ask you to fill in a prompt to generate a background. I already have a prompt ready and I'm just going to paste that in and click on generate. The prompt that I'm using is grass and mountains with a medieval castle off to the distance during sunset with a shallow depth of field. And the results are not bad. However, I don't use this feature for a couple reasons. First, even though the generations are all pretty good, it generated other objects to my image that I don't want. For example, a hat in this case, and in this image, something else here that I'm not quite sure what that is, but I definitely don't like it. There's only one background image that I could use, but unfortunately, there is a problem with this background image. If I disable my main subject, you can see that this generation has a hole and that wouldn't work because if I were to move her into a different position, you will be able to see the hole and that doesn't work as a background for me. There is a way of fixing it. You can go into the selection brush tool and just make a selection around the hole. And I'm gonna do that fairly quickly here. You don't have to be precise. Just make sure you select everything. And when you come back to where you started and release, Photoshop will fill in those pixels then you can click on Generative Fill, leave the prompt blank and click Generate and we'll create content that covers the whole. This may look okay, but getting something that works takes too many steps and you don't get many options besides what you put in the prompt. I recommend using the Generate Image feature instead. You can bring it up by clicking on this icon in the toolbar. From this window, I will paste the same prompt. But now I get more options such as Content Type, which means I could generate an image that looks more like an illustration or a photo. In this case, I want a photo. I could also use a reference image so I can use an image to match the style. In this case, I'm going to go into choose image and I already have a reference image here. This is more of what I had in mind when I was thinking about the background. So I'm going to use this image to influence the generation. I'll click on open and you can see now that it appears here on the thumbnail. And I could also use effects. I can select any one of these effects to apply to my generation. In this case, I'll choose themes and I'll go with cinematic because I want to create a cinematic looking background. Then I'll click on generate. And in just a few moments, Photoshop will generate three variations based on my prompt, the style reference and the effect I chose. 
and these backgrounds look much better than what I had before. So now I can choose the one that I like best, bring back my foreground element, and then press Ctrl T to transform, zoom out a bit, and scale the image to match the scene as best as possible. And this gives me a much better result, and there are no holes, and I can place her anywhere I want. And at this point, with the brush tool, you can paint with white on the layer mask to bring back any hidden details. One of the new features that may not be obvious is the upgrade to the latest Adobe Firefly Image Model 3, which improves all these generative AI tools, yielding improved photographic quality, better prompt comprehension to understand complex descriptions, and generation variety to explore different results. Let me now show you a few comparisons. This is the original image, and I used the prompt Venetian Canal with gondolas. This is a result with the new Firefly Image 3 model. Compare that with the Firefly Image 2 model. They're both good, but you will notice that with version 3, we kept more of the faded look in the image. Version 2, the one in Photoshop 2024, made the gondola darker than everything else in the scene, which is not very realistic. Also, there's more photorealistic details on the gondola with the Firefly Image 3 model. In this next image, I made a selection around the bicyclist and used the prompt, man riding a bike with a leather jacket and blue torn jeans. This is a result with the new Firefly image model 3, and this is model 2. Again, the contrast in the new model is much better, it really matches the scene. And the old model makes his body brighter and it doesn't quite match the bike. The new model also gave me more detail in the jacket and it gave me the torn jeans I asked for but I do like how the old model gave me the seam on the side of the leg. We'll do one more. This time we'll compare Generative Expand. This is a result I got after expanding the image with Model 3. It's not perfect, but good overall detail. And this is Model 2. Not as good, and the street on the left is lacking a lot of detail. The new Firefly model is not perfect, but it's definitely an improvement. Let me know if you've noticed the difference in your generations. We just looked at some of the best new features in Photoshop 2025, but all my favorite new features are in the latest Photoshop beta, version 26.1. For me, without a doubt, the best new feature is the Substance 3D Viewer, which we will look at in depth in a moment, so stick around to the end to check it out. But first, let me show you two incredible features in the Photoshop beta. Let's start with the Reference Image feature. First, enable the Selection Brush tool. Then, I'll quickly make a selection around her clothing, no need to be precise. When I get back to the area where I started and release, Photoshop will automatically fill in the rest of the selection, and that's exactly what I want. At this point, you can add to the selection simply by painting over the image, or you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag to subtract from the selection. Fine tune it as much as you need to get a good selection. Now, I'm gonna go into Generator Fill and I'm simply going to type the word dress and I'll generate that prompt. This should be no surprise to you, Photoshop will generate a dress over her body and it looks fantastic. And we can click on the variations to see different results. But Photoshop chose the style of the dress. What if we wanted something specific? What if we wanted a red polka dot dress like this one here? What do we do? Well, we can now click on this icon here to enable the reference image, click on choose image, and I'll choose the polka dot dress. Click on open. You can see that this is now the reference image that Photoshop will use, and I'll click on generate. Now, Photoshop will generate three dresses based on that polka dot dress, and we can choose the one we like best. In this case, I think I like this one the most. As you can see, it's not perfect. We're probably 90% of the way there, but that's where your traditional Photoshop skills come into play. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to right click on this layer and convert it into a smart object. What I'll do now is go into filter and choose liquify. Make sure that you enable show backdrop and show the original layer. In this case is my background layer so that I can see the original image and I have an opacity of about 50%. Then, with the For Warp tool, I can move pixels to match her original body. By the way, when you do this, make sure that you have a large brush. I'm going to tap on the right bracket key on the keyboard to increase my brush size, and then I'm just going to click and drag to match the contours of her body. And do this on all areas as best as possible. And it's okay to go over the line like I'm doing here on the table. I can disable the show backdrop so you can see the result and enable it again. 
and just keep resizing your brush and make any adjustments that are necessary. You're never gonna get a perfect match, but that's okay. As long as it looks realistic, that's all you need to do. By the way, if you press the P key on the keyboard, you can see the original image. Press P again to see the edited version. That probably works better if you disable show back rub before and after. I'll press OK, and this is looking much, much better. Next, I'll hold Alt, then click on the layer mask icon to create a black mask, which hides everything. And now, with the brush tool and white as my foreground color, I'll paint over the mask to reveal the dress over her body. And this is my final result. Let's now look at a really powerful tool for generating images. From the welcome screen in the Photoshop beta, you will see this new button, Generative Workspace. You can also go into Edit and choose Generative Workspace. But oftentimes I'll just use the keyboard shortcut, Alt, Shift, Control, G. This opens up this window where we can generate images. But why is it special? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Let me start from the beginning. First, I will type the prompt, Ace of Hearts playing card on a white background, and I'll generate. While it's generating, I can change the prompt to something else and continue generating without it waiting to finish for the first generation. But what truly makes this powerful is the ability to ideate with variables. For example, I can highlight the word spades and click on add variables. This will place brackets around the word spades and I could add more words by separating them with commas. For example, diamonds and clubs. Now I'll come over to the generate button, but notice that there is a 12 here. This means that the generative workspace will generate 12 images. It will generate four ace of spades, four ace of diamonds, and four ace of clubs. In best of all, we can add more than one set of variables. For example, after the word card, I'll type in a, then I'll click on the variable button. Outside of the variables, I'll type style, and I'll go back into the variables and type three design style variations for my playing cards. Cartoon, medieval, and futuristic. Now we're going to generate 36 variations, one for each corresponding variable. I'll click on generate. This will only take a moment. Pretty soon you're gonna start seeing all the different generations that we're creating here. Cartoon, futuristic, and medieval. If you like any one of these designs for your project, you can simply click on it and you can see the full screen version of it and you can click on open. This will open the image inside of Photoshop and you can continue working with it. I'm going to bring up the generative workspace once again by pressing Control Alt Shift G. Currently we're in the detailed view, but if I go back into the timeline view, you can see all the generations I created with you a moment ago and the generations I've made prior to recording this video. If you want to work with another image in your design, simply click on it and you can click on open or you can choose add to and choose where it will go to a new document. Or if you click on the drop down, you'll see the list of all the currently open documents. I only have one untitled document, so I can click on that and I'll add it as a separate layer and click on add. This will open up this document as a separate layer inside of the first document we created a moment ago. This is a great tool for ideation. I highly recommend that you check it out. Now let's check out my favorite feature in Photoshop 2025 beta, the Substance 3D Viewer. In the past, Photoshop allowed direct 3D editing, and I made plenty of video tutorials on Photoshop 3D. However, Adobe removed those features a few years ago, but now they're bringing them back sort of with the Substance 3D Viewer. While you can't edit 3D objects directly in Photoshop anymore, this tool is packed with features that make it great for compositing 3D objects into your Photoshop designs. Let me show you how it works. This is the background image that we're going to work with. The first step is to go into File and choose Place Embedded. From here, I'm going to open up this OBJ file. OBJ files are 3D images. By the way, this 3D object comes from stock.adobe.com. You can go there and search under Free for any object that you like. Make sure that after you search, you narrow down to 3D objects, and then you can download all the free 3D objects that are available. That way you can try out this new feature. But anyway, with this OBJ, this 3D object selected, I'm gonna click on place, and this is going to place this 3D object in my Photoshop file as a smart object. All I'm gonna do now is just simply hit enter to commit the changes. 
And you can see that here. This is a smart object. You can tell by this icon to edit a smart object. You can click on edit contents from the properties panel, or you can simply double click on the smart object thumbnail. When you do that, Substance 3D Viewer Beta opens up and it will have the composite that we're working with as the background and the 3D object as well. Now we can select what type of mouse or trackpad we're using and use these controls to navigate our 3D scene. So I'm going to rotate and place it into position. I'm not going to call out what I'm doing just because you can see the options here at the bottom. And I'm just going to make sure that it matches my scene as best as possible. I'm going to go quickly here, but I think that you get the idea. Once you have your 3D object into position, you can use the controls here on the left to make further adjustments. First, let's look at the environment. With the environment, we can enable the ground plane. As soon as I do that, notice that we get a shadow. See the shadow here on the street? We can also enable reflections, but when you click on it, it's not going to work because we need to enable the ray tracing in order to get better lighting, shadows, and reflections. So I'll enable that. This is going to slow down your computer a bit. How much slow will it be? It depends on your hardware, but you can see now that the shadow looks better. The lighting looks better and we can enable a reflection, but we're going to run into a problem. See how the reflection gets cut here at the bottom. That is because my 3D object wasn't covering the entire canvas. So how can we make it cover the entire canvas? We can go back into the composition view here, click and you'll notice the 3D object here. Just make sure that the scene, the 3D scene covers my background. And when it covers it, that reflection won't be an issue. So I can reposition this and place it anywhere I want and the reflection will always work. So I'm gonna place the car right about there and again, just rotate it a bit so that it matches my scene the way that I want. I'm gonna go back into the environment and I'm going to reduce the reflection. To be quite honest, there wouldn't be a reflection in this scene, but I'm just gonna keep it for the purposes of this demonstration. So there you go, we have a very faint reflection. Another thing that you can do in the environment tab is adjust the brightness of your 3D object based on the light and rotate the light to make it match the scene better. By the way, you have light presets here. When you click on this, you can choose between these three options. Pick the one that works best for your scene. But here's a pro tip. Click on this icon to select your custom lighting. When you open that up, Substance 3D Viewer is going to ask you for HDR images, but you can switch to all files and you can open up JPEGs and PNGs. This is the PNG file of my background that we're using, the background here, same file. I'm just gonna open that one up and use that as lighting so that we can color match the 3D object and get similar reflections on the car to what we see in the background. What I'm going to do now is maybe increase the brightness a little bit more and rotate so that I get a similar reflection. See how this reflection is basically that building there. That's what we want. We want to get something that looks realistic and obviously we can spend all the time in the world fine tuning these small details. But for the purposes of this demo, I think this works. Once you're happy with your design, what you can do is click on to Photoshop and that will take this image back into Photoshop. So I'll bring Photoshop back up and you can see now that Photoshop automatically brought my 3D object in the new positioning with the new lighting back in. And of course I can continue creating new adjustment layers or any type of layer really and make adjustments and treat it like any other layer to make it match the scene better. Now. I'm going to go back into the Substance 3D Viewer to show you some of the other features. I'm going to go into the materials here. And for materials, you can see the different materials for the car. So if I select one of the materials, it will open it up. And you can see that this particular material is an image. If I don't want to use that image as the material, I can simply click on the trash icon and go into color and pick a color. So it could be red again, or it could be blue or any other color that I want. Notice that the metallic slider is disabled. I can increase it more to make it more reflective. And that's because I'm using an image. It's just a black image. So I'm going to throw away this image and now I can use the slider to increase how metallic this car looks. This is not the look that I want. I just wanted to show you that that was an option. So I'm going to press control Z to undo several times. 
to bring back the image as the material and that's what I want. Now, another thing that you can do is click on this icon to show some material presets that you can drag onto your car. However, if you use one of these materials, you will replace the image and you won't be able to get it back by pressing Control Z to undo it. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna click on the car here so that I can select it or select this piece of the car of the 3D object. And I'm gonna scroll down and choose titanium. And I'm just gonna click on this titanium material. When I do that, all the settings for this titanium material are applied, but if I press Control Z to undo, no matter how many times I do that, I won't get back that red image I was using for the material. So just wanted to point that out for you. So I'm gonna click on the car again, and I am gonna keep this titanium look. And so that the whole car matches, I'll click on the back part and add that titanium material as well. When I'm done, I can click on to Photoshop and you can see how these materials are applied to my composite here. It almost looks a little bit like a Cybertruck. What do you think? But anyway, back into the Substance 3D Viewer, I'm gonna show you another cool feature and that is with Generative AI. So we can generate 3D models by typing in text and generate a 3D model. Quite frankly, I haven't had much success with that. So instead, I prefer to use the Generative AI to help me generate different things, such as a composite using this 3D model. So I can just type in a background, for example, sandy beach on a foggy sunrise. I'll click on generate and Substance 3D Viewer will generate that background for this 3D object. And there it is. It looks fantastic. What do you think? Look at all the variations here and we can select the one that works best. I think the first one was the best one. It looks incredible. Let me know what you think. The other thing that you can do is generate a new image based on the 3D object and the prompt. So the car will disappear. It will now be generated, but we will use the car as a reference. So I can use the prompt gray metallic car on a sandy beach. Click generate. And there you go. It's a complete generation, but it used the car as a reference. The 3D object became the reference and it generated a car on the background that I told it to create. The other thing that you can do with generative AI is generate a material for the car. In this case, I'm just going to type brown bricks and it will generate a brown brick material and apply it to the car. And there you go. The brown bricks are applied to the car. We have the reflection and everything looks fantastic. What I'm gonna do now is select the one I like best. I think this is the best result. And I can click to Photoshop to get this new design into Photoshop. And if you made it this far, click the like button and subscribe. My name is Jesus Ramirez. Thank you for watching.